Can you guess what this code does? What if I told you that sometimes the worse your code looks, the better? Let's explore a world where the most unreadable C code wins a prize. Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video we're going to be exploring some of the submissions to the International Obfuscated C Code Contest, or the IOCCC. Now the IOCCC is the longest running programming competition. It was established back in 1984 and contests are still happening today. The goal behind this contest is to write the most unreadable and most obfuscated C code possible that still functions properly and also looks really cool inside of the source code. This is designed to push the limits of the C compiler as well as show what is actually possible inside of the C programming language. Now there's two intricacies about the C programming language that make writing really unreadable code possible, as well as make this contest able to happen. The first is the fact that the C compiler doesn't care about additional white space. That means when you're adding additional new lines or tabs inside of your program, you're really only doing that to make your code more readable for other programmers. The compiler is going to go through and remove all of that white space once it's compiling the application. Now the second thing are the existence of macros. Macros allow you to create aliases for actual syntax, keywords, or tokens that are normally used inside of the C programming language and replace them with tokens that you would like to use while you're writing the source code. For example, let's say I was tired of using the regular good old return zero at the end of my program and instead I wanted to say peace out. All I need to do is define a couple macros up at the top of my program and now I'm going to replace the token return with the new key keyword piece and replace the constant zero with the new keyword out, and then I can end my program with piece out, and that is doing effectively the same thing as returning zero at the end of my program. Because of these capabilities, this makes C a great candidate language for creating some really unreadable code. Now let's go over to our International Obfuscated C Code Contest page and check out some of the winning entries. This page contains all of the historical data for all of the winning entries even back to 1984 when the first competition was held, and you can find the programming code associated with the submissions, their make files, basically anything you need to build the applications, which we're going to do a little bit later on when we execute some of these. But it also contains the awards from the judges for each different entry. For example, you have most explosive, best perspective, uh, don't tread on me award. Basically, anything the judges feel like awarding to these submissions, they can and they can make up and give to these submissions. Now I've pre-selected a few cool submissions to take a look at. Now what we're going to do is we're going to try de-obfuscating the code of one of the programs, and then we're going to execute a couple of the programs to see what they're actually doing while they're executing. Let's go over to our first submission and take a look at this. And now hopefully you're getting the idea of what the goal is behind these IOCCC competitions. Not only do you have to write really ugly C code, but you have to make it look cool. You can't just write bad C code. You have to make it look kind of unique and interesting. Now this one, when you take a look at it, kind of looks like it's got the Death Star inside of it. Now the way they're making this happen is remember, the C compiler doesn't care about additional spacing. It's basically only paying attention if you're using like semicolons and space in between the tokens. For example, Example, space in between int and space in between main is very important to add. However, they're using single letter variable names as well as a lot of different complicated mathematical expressions in combination with manipulating the spacing to produce this cool circular look that we are able to see now. Now this application does fully compile and actually executes properly. Now if we want to fix the spacing a little bit to try to make this to be a little bit more readable of a program rather than to see how cool it looks, what we can do is we can use the JS tool plugin inside of Notepad++. This is technically created for JavaScript, but it will work pretty well on C code as well. So I'm going to do that so we can kind of get a better view of this code while we're deobfuscating it a little. I'm going to do plugins, JS tool, JS format, and now you can see this is starting to look like a real C program. We do have all of these complicated mathematical expressions inside of here, but other than that, you can tell that we have a couple nested for loops, we have a few constants defined up here, and this is looking a little bit more straightforward. Now if we go to the top portion of this, this is looking a little bit funky up here, and I think what we did is we missed one of these macros defined in the beginning of the application. Now I'm going to press Control Z and get rid of our space fixing because I think we need to go through and replace one of these macros first. I'm going to do Control Z 
and get our cool looking application again, but let's take a look at this macro. Now what we're doing is we're replacing the keyword main with parentheses with all of this expression inside of here. And the way they're doing this is they're using the escape character, the backslash, to backslash and allow a new line in between this. So all of this is actually one macro, and we can get rid of the backslash as well as the new line to make it a little bit clearer. Let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to delete this character, delete the new line, delete this character, delete the new line, and then same thing over here. Now the reason it looked so funky before is because we actually have a fake main inside of this. This is going to be the real code that's going to be replaced by the compiler when it's fixing and doing its pre-processing of this application. What we can do if we want to deobfuscate this right now is simply find all occurrences of this main and then replace it with this entire expression. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to copy this and it looks like we only have one occurrence of this. So I'm going to paste this in. Now we don't need this macro definition anymore. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of this. Now that we have this portion fixed, this fixes our fake main that was there previously. So we can do our spacing fix one more time and then this should look like proper code. I'm gonna do plugins, JS tool, JS format one more time. And now here we go, this looks straightforward. We have our main defined, this is our declaration of our function that is named m, and then this is the definition that it's getting called inside of our main function. Now even after this deobfuscation, the function of this program is still super unclear, so I'm going to show you a cool trick for deobfuscating programs a little bit easier. I took this application, compiled it using the build scripts that are provided inside of the IOCCC website, and then I generated the binary for this application. I'm going to take that binary and throw it into Ghidra, which is a popular open source decompiler for applications. Here is the code inside of Ghidra, and we can take a look at what is inside of this application. Now this includes all of the optimizations that the compiler will do when it's processing this application. For example, fixing the spacing as well as fixing any additional unnecessary code or mathematical expressions. So this is the decompiled code from the compiled application, and we can take a look at this and it's definitely simplified a lot of the expressions as well as simplified our constants up at the top. Now, if we want to take a look at the constants that are defined up top, we can just drop those in a Google search to see what these belong to, like what algorithm these belong to. I'm going to search this and we see this looks like it belongs to the MD5 hashing algorithm. This is probably going to be the one time in your life where reading the decompiled code is actually easier than reading the original source code. Now let's move on to our next example submission and let's try to run a couple of these applications to see what they do. Let's go on to this submission. Now this one looks really cool. We have a couple of macros defined up at the top. Same kind of obfuscation techniques that we saw in the previous submission. In fact, a lot of these use the same obfuscation techniques throughout all of the different submissions, but they try to create this unique kind of look. This particular author has messed with the spacing of this as well, but they're creating this cool kind of inverted clock look. They're also taking advantage of the fact that you can add additional new lines and spacing inside of the code, as as well as the fact that you can insert comments in the middle of expressions, which is pretty cool. And that's how we get this weird kind of clock looking thing that's a little bit inverted inside of here. Now, if you're not sure what this application does, that's totally okay. Why don't we open up our virtual machine and try to execute this and see what happens. I'm going to open up my Linux box and let's see what happens when we run this submission. Now we have all of the build files that are associated with this and I already went ahead and built this application. Now all we have to do is run dot slash run clock. So we'll do dot slash run clock. And now we're running our obfuscated C program. And this one looks really cool because they added all of the original code inside of this. And the special note from the author was to wait and watch this for 15 to 20 seconds. So let's wait and watch and see what happens. Now we can see the hands of this clock inside of this program are moving while we run this application. And they've also included all of the original source code, but inverted from the way it was on disk to inside of the application while it's executing. Let's move on to our next submission. I'm going to go out of here. 
Now this submission is also using a lot of the same techniques, but we've got this cool column look and they're adding all of these additional spaces in between the keywords of the application. Now a lot of this is unnecessary, but that's okay because the C compiler is going through and it's taking out all of these extra spaces when it's compiling the application. That's how we can get this cool looking column look that makes this submission particularly unique. Additionally, we have a lot of macros up here, a lot of macros inside of this that are super complicated, where this entire expression is going to replace every time the letter J for this variable is used inside of this application. Now, if you're not sure what this code does at first glance, don't worry, neither am I. So what we can do is go ahead and run this application and see what happens. Let's go back to our virtual machine and let's get out of our clock obfuscated program. Let's go to our next one. Now, this particular author has given some specific instructions for how to run this application. So we can go to the IOCCC website and see what they recommend doing to execute this application. This is the supporting page that contains all of the judges' comments for properly executing this application after they've spent time trying to figure out what it does and how it runs. Now, why don't we go ahead and steal a couple of the commands so we can execute this and see what happens. I'm going to copy this. Let's go back to our virtual machine and let's execute this application. Here we go. They also commented that you should use the arrow keys to try to move this around, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hit the down arrow key to start. And it looks like we have a snake application. So we need to get, we need to get the, the dot. There we go. And then if we do that, our snake tail gets longer. Nice. And there we go. Now you're able to see some of the really cool functionality that some of these heavily obfuscated, super unreadable programs are actually capable of doing. Next time you want to run a snake program or create an MD5 hashing program inside of your source code in C, feel free to use these submissions to impress your friends. Don't actually do that. <laughs> if you're feeling confident that your C code is not only super unreadable, but also really cool and unique in some way, then feel free to keep an eye on the International Obfuscated C Code Contest website to see when the 28th contest will be held. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next video. cars. Probably.